I'm getting a standing ovation before I even said anything. <laughs> uh, <what? laughs> um, I am honored to be here. Uh, it, this is just an amazing thing that has happened in my life. Uh, and uh, I was so moved by the, uh, by the videos, by all the support you know, from my teammates and my friends, uh, my friends that I see here. Uh, Nancy, I mean, amazing. You go way back and uh, congratulating you in your amazing job at the Yes Network. Um, Ray, thank you, thank you. Ray was one of the first people that I, that I met when I became uh, a Yankee playing in the, in the big leagues. And he was um, the, uh, his knowledge of the Spanish language made him uh, more of a liaison between the Latin players and the, and the organization. And he uh, was one of the first people that really made me feel uh, at home. So thank you, Ray. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want, I want to take the, this opportunity to uh, thank Dom for letting me use his number. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, the story goes that uh, uh, our clubhouse manager at the time, Mr. Nick Piori, uh, gave me the number uh, because I reminded him of uh, Willie McGee. Uh, so he said to me, you're going to take 51, and you are going to like it, young man. Uh, and I said, thank you, sir. May I have another? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, um, I actually had an opportunity to uh, wear number six, uh, uh, probably my th second or third year, must have been 93 or 94. Buck Showalter said, oh, number six has become available. And I talked it over with some people, and I said, well, you know what, 51 got me here. I'm going to stick with 51. So I, I could have won six. I mean, are you kidding me? Now Joe Torre, uh, and now I have no single-digit numbers in the Yankees. Uh, so whoever wants to... Uh, uh, be uh, noted has to go backwards. You know, judge is 99, so they, they have to go like sort of 98, 97. Uh, for uh, Jay uh, Horowitz, I remember we were talking briefly about our trip to Japan as a uh, part of the uh, All Star uh, tour that we played. I remember Jay being uh, smart, wise, and persistent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, he was a cons uh, consummate professional. He made everything so smooth for us. I remember uh, one of the things that I had to do, that we had to do in Japan, was uh, uh, play in this uh, uh, variety show, which they invited Mr. Barry Bonds, uh, Jason Giambi, uh, and Hideki Matsui and myself playing in this uh, sort of kind of quirky Japanese game <laughs> where we had a, p a pitcher going in a trampoline on the mound jumping uh, 30 feet in the air, and from that angle, throwing the ball, throwing strikes <laughs> and home plate. So we have to hit the ball like this. <laughs> it was like, besides that, that was a, an amazing trip. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Cleon James, uh, so humble to be here with you. Uh, and uh, we share uh, uh, the same honor catching the uh, last out on, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, in Shea Stadium. Uh, we both took a knee, so I took a page from your book. So um, thank you, thank you for all you said here. Yes. And uh, this is kind of strange, but this memory actually, I was not, um, I was not thinking about this at all, but uh, having Mookie here actually trigger this childhood memory, it's like my, earliest childhood memory about playing the game of baseball. I started playing when I was eight years old, right? Steve, you haven't heard this one. Uh, we went uh, and won our league in the little town called Vega Alta, where we grew up. And as a prize, our prize for winning the, the championship was to go to the Hiram Bizarre Stadium in Puerto Rico and watch the uh, Puerto Rican Winter Ball uh, Baseball League All-Star Game. The, uh, you play with the Arecibo Lobos, right? Yes. Uh, I remember as an eight-year-old, uh, you know, I don't remember too much about the game, but I, the one thing that sticks in my mind is the uh, skills competition <laughs> where uh, Mr. Mookie Wilson 
uh, won the prize running around the bases. And I don't know what was the time, but I was a track athlete at the time. And as a young player, I said, I want to be that guy <laughs> who's Mookie. That guy, Mookie Wilson, yes. As an eight-year-old, you were inspiring young people even back then. So thank you so much for that. That was amazing. <laughs> so I, I want to uh, keep going by um, uh, thanking Mr. Rene uh, LaRue and the New York State Baseball Hall of Fame staff for this incredible honor and for all the hard work you have put in to make this a beautiful ceremony and a celebration for all of us tonight. Uh, the stories that I've heard uh, from everybody, you know, uh, have been so moving and uh, have been so inspiring. So thank you so much for having me here. I am so grateful uh, to my brother Hiram, who came a long way and flew up from Puerto Rico to be here and introduce me. Thank you, Hiram. And I will, thank you. And I will be the first one to tell you that um, I will not be here tonight receiving this honor without the sacrifices that my family made a long and winding, uh, winding road to success. So he is, on behalf of my family, I'm, I'm receiving this award. Uh, this belongs to all of us, because they all raised me and uh, they, put a, they invested a lot of time in raising us, and uh, that was the result. Uh, my brother is my only sibling, and uh, we, were, we were just born a year apart. Uh, and uh, we were raised by a set of parents that truly made us who we are today. You know all about me, but I am so proud of Hiram, who is also a lawyer, is an attorney, and, <laughs> and a musician who plays the cello and performs with me in concert when, uh, when, when we're able to make it. Um, my mom was an educator, like my brother said, in the public education system in Puerto Rico for 40 years. And my dad was a merchant marine who traveled the world. And they were both united in their stand that Hiram and I would have a well-rounded education that included academics first, but also enriching our lives with arts, music, and athletics. Uh, little that my mom knew that I was going to become a, a baseball player. Uh, she probably envisioned me to be a, a doctor uh, or a lawyer or an architect. He said, what are you going to do with baseball? I mean, are you kidding me? That all changed after, after she saw the first check. Uh, <laughs> uh, so <laughs> they're, they're, both, they're both past now, but I know that they're looking down from heaven, and I think they're proud of my brother and I, not for the accomplishments, uh, but for striving to be good citizens good parents and pass on what they taught us to those whose lives we have change and impact. I learned how to play baseball and music around the same time. I was about eight years old and uh, if anyone had told me about when I was eight years old, that version of me, that I was going to go into a long baseball career and finish as a musician to write and record music and share to audiences all over the world. I would have said, you are out of your mind. <laughs> but here I am, all these years later, my baseball playing days behind me, but so blessed for what this game has given me, the moments and the relationships. Well, maybe one of these days, Hiram and I will play a game of wiffle ball like we did those years ago, but I will be more than an old timers game. Uh, I don't know. I keep saying, you know, people saying, when are you going to come back? First of all, I'm not. <laughs> but if I do, I said, I only have one good swing, and I save it for Old Timer's Day. That's what I do. <laughs> so, okay. so, you know, well, when you see the names and hear the stories of my fellow inductees, and congratulations for all of you, by the way, it demonstrates what makes this Hall of Fame truly unique and how it recognizes men and women for all aspects of this great game who have made their mark. And we are all have the same connection. It's New York. It's New York. Everyone knows about my 16 years playing for the New York Yankees, but my New York story began years before I ever put on the pinstripes or play my first game in Yankee Stadium. 
as a young player in a farm system, in the Yankees farm system, I got assigned to Onianza in the New York Penn League in 1987 at age 18. And didn't stay too long, but what, that was a good thing. I was promoted to a high A class, uh, a high A ball and finished a year in Fort Lauderdale. But after a year in Prince William in the Carolina League in 1988, where I won a batting title as a switch hitter, I was promoted to double A and uh, I came to play very close to where we all gathered together tonight for the Albany Colony Yankees in Heritage Field, <laughs> Heritage Park. I was back in New York and the two seasons playing there were some of, the, some of my most memorable um, so most memorable and special. After I moved on to the Columbus Clippers and sometime in AAA, I finally got that call to the Yankees on July 7th, 1991, and the next 16 years flew by, literally flew by, and were filled with some struggles and growing pains, but lots of thrills and magical moments. And everything in between, I wouldn't change a, thing, a single thing. I wouldn't change anything about that. As my career progressed, after signing with the Yankees long term, I decided to make New York my permanent home, raise my family here, and I still, I'm still a New Yorker here to this day today. Uh, thank you. In being back upstate here tonight, my thoughts go back uh, to the fans up here who have always been so fiercely loyal to their community to its teams and to its players, and truly made me feel like one of their own. As a working musician now, I have had the pleasure to perform with my band all over the state of New York, including in those, those cities where I played, once played, baseball, on the Anta and Albany. After my concerts, I usually get, have the chance to do a, a meet and greet with the, attendee, the, with the attendees, and I have been blown away by how many folks who come out and see me uh, and see my show and support my music career are the same ones who saw me play in these minor league cities well over 30 years ago. And they were telling such detailed stories about seeing me in a game or making a play like it was yesterday, giving somebody a broken bat, you know, like somebody told me today. Uh, amazing. And it has been that was seemingly everywhere I go and it was uh, and it really has taken me all these years after playing to understand how much, that, how much what I did on the field meant to my fans. My dad always reminded me that baseball is played on the field by players, but it is played for the fans. And he said, son, always remember and take care of your fans. My dad used to say that to me all the time. Whether it was a, sc a scattered crowd at Old Heritage Park here in Albany, or in front of 55,000 screaming fans, diehard Yankee fans at the stadium. The fans were there with me for this entire journey and are still with me today. In fact, speaking of fans, I was informed that this was the relentless right in campaign for two longtime fans that resulted in my nomination to be inducted. So to Joan and Rusty, who are here tonight, Thank you so much for your loyalty and for your support in my baseball career and now with my music career in the community and work in the community. Uh, you know, this is like the third time I've seen you this week. So, <laughs> and they're at all my concerts. They're my biggest fans. So, you know what? Thank you. Thank you. Hiram was so right when he said that it takes a village to get you there where you want to go. And it did start with my parents and my entire family. And through the years and to this day, that village has grown to include so many that have been there for me through the thick and thin and impacted my life in so many ways. I want to thank my children and all the joy that they have brought me as a dad and for the love and support they have for me today they are all adults now and working hard to fulfill their own dreams, so thank you to them. I want to thank also Mr. George Steinbrenner, who gave me the opportunity to be a Yankee. And then stay a Yankee for my entire career. The entire Steinbrenner family and Yankee organization have been so good to me, and it's always 
special to go back to the stadium for an appearance, a reunion, old timers day, or to throw out the first pitch without bouncing it, of course. <laughs> I have always said that I miss, what I miss most about the game is the competition and those who I competed with. I, and I want to thank all my managers, coaches, and teammates through the years. Uh, there's so many that, uh, I mean, that, that 10 minute mark is going to hit me, yeah, and I'm you know, <laughs> going to be halfway through it. I have had the chance to visit many major and minor league stadiums in the last several years to promote awareness for the disease that took my dad's life, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. And at, at, a, at every single stop, I see an old teammate or two, one who's managing, one who's coaching, one who's at the, at the broadca a broadcast booth or the front office. Uh, these are relationships that I foster and have in baseball. And you can go years without running into one, but when you see them and you kind of pick things up from them, like them, like it was yesterday. And it's all part of this great fraternity of baseball lifers and what makes this game, uh, this game so great. This is such a tremendous honor, and I want to thank you all so much for coming out tonight to celebrate the legacy of baseball in New York. And before I finish, I want to make a, uh, a pause to recognize my longtime manager, Mr. Steve Fortunato. Yeah. 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 Keeping up with me, making sure that I'm on time, making sure that everything is ready and fine, and I, it makes my life a lot easier. It's just invaluable to have you in my life. So thank you so much, man. So I am so proud and honored to join so many great men and women in this Hall of Fame. God bless you all. Thank you.